Hey everybody, welcome back. Well, here we are and we have one of the most controversial, if not the most controversial rulings in Supreme Court history, Roe versus Wade. So let's get right to it. All right, so chances are pretty good that you've already heard of Roe versus Wade. In fact, you might even have some really strong opinions about it. In fact, when presidents nominate new Supreme Court justices, often one of the most important things is their stand on Roe versus Wade. There are thriving pro-choice and pro-life movements in the United States today. It is a political issue that seems to be everywhere around us. The facts of the case are rather simple. A woman named Norma McCorvey sought to obtain an abortion. However, in her home state of Texas, it was illegal to do so unless it was to save the life of the mother. So she filed a lawsuit, and by the way, courts kept McCorvey's name private, calling her Jane Roe as the lawsuit proceeded, hence the name Roe v. Wade. By a 7-2 majority, the Supreme Court held that a woman has a right to an abortion based on the right of privacy. Now, in addition to being controversial for allowing a legal right to an abortion, some people have also criticized the manner or the way that the Supreme Court determined that that right exists, doing so via a right of privacy. The constitutional principle is that a woman has the right to an abortion based on the right of privacy and that it is also incorporated through the 14th Amendment as a fundamental liberty. The choice to use the right of privacy as the foundation of abortion rights has been criticized by both supporters and opponents of Roe v. Wade's ruling. If you're racking your brain trying to think, well, where in the Constitution is the right of privacy? Well, that's kind of the point. It's not there. It's nowhere to be found in the Bill of Rights. In fact, the Supreme Court discovered and established the right of privacy in a case called Griswold v. Connecticut in 1965. They found that the 1st, 3rd, 4th, 5th, 9th, and 14th Amendments taken together implied a right of privacy. The fact that something as contentious as abortion rights is based on a right that's not expressly written in the Bill of Rights is used by opponents to argue that this ruling is an example of judicial activism run amok, that the court was legislating from the bench, forcing a policy upon the nation without constitutional support. Notice this quote from Justice White's dissent. He basically accuses the court of just making up an abortion right out of thin air with no constitutional backing and then forcing the states to abide by that policy. But obviously we need to consider the opinion of the court. Justice Blackmun wrote the majority opinion, and he seems less concerned with the exact justification for the constitutional right of privacy than the end result, that a woman legally has the right to terminate a pregnancy. The opinion did go on to say that there is not an unqualified right to abortion, therefore states are allowed to limit access after the first trimester, in fact, we've seen this repeated through many state laws and other Supreme Court cases right up until 2020, where states have tried to, by various means, restrict and make it tougher for a woman to have that access to an abortion. All right, that's pretty much it for this one. So until next time, this has been a Lamoney production. Thanks again for watching this video. Help me out, hit that like button. And if you're just finding my channel for the first time, make sure you subscribe. I have tons of great content covering all the required cases documents, everything you need for AP Gov. See you next time.